Yes. Welcome back. All right. I was going to type out your answer, but I'll just use my mouth. As far as creating through the patches and stuff. Hmm. Well, if I'm making a synth, I don't usually bother with presets. There's some plugins that I have that have some nice presets. Like I have a Profit, I think it's a Profit 5 emulator. And there's some pretty good presets there. But mostly, yeah, like for Massive and stuff, I would just start from scratch. Thanks for the bits. I wonder if I need to have desktop audio on for you guys to hear that. Was the sound doubled? I feel like it is. Hmm, it's hard to tell. Let me see. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, I don't need to have desktop audio on. Okay, cool. And I should turn that down. Thanks for the subscription. Um, I didn't finish your question. If it's a sample, then I would have to start with something. <laughs> Should I add a tip jar? I've always felt like every time I see a tip jar, like the 3D tip jar, I felt kind of corny about it. <laughs> Today's topic is hule. I thought I'd just do a bunch of different things. Um, there's a lot of people that ask questions about um, like how to get past certain struggles when you're working on something or can't even get motivated to work on something. And I definitely don't have great answers, but it'd be fun just to like compare answers. <laughs> and other than that, I thought for the first time I'd bring up the speed cubes that I have <laughs> because sometimes I'm in an Instagram post and you can see the the cube and people are like why are you holding it this way or like <laughs> there's definitely this like competitiveness that I don't really want to get involved in but <laughs> it's always hilarious to see people like zooming in on the pixels of my Rubik's cube to figure out if I'm like doing something wrong <laughs> Today we won't be doing any coffee ASMR because I ran out of beans yesterday. Oh, new Bonobo. Okay, see you guys. Sorry. What a horrible position you guys are in watching me. Yeah, I should have kept it going for 45 minutes. I, s I thought there was a new, at least there was a new single because I saw it on Spotify. I think the best way to do the listening party is on the weekend because I can do it a little earlier so that the people in the UK can also watch. I'll, you know what? I'm going to make a custom tip jar. I think it'd be a funny thing. I don't know what exactly I could come up with, but I'm sure I could come up with something slightly amusing. All right, let's start with the speed cube and get it out of the way. I did want to show you. <laughs> I just <laughs> imagine doing a whole stream about it.
I'm not that good. Um, this one, um, Hikari got me this one for my birthday last year. And it's seven by seven. This one's a lot of fun, but the procedure is basically the same as any Rubik's Cube. It's just longer. <laughs> I haven't really timed myself, but it usually takes me like half an hour or something. I definitely haven't spent the time it takes to know all the um, shortcuts. I just kind of use my um, my best idea of what <laughs> what I should do to solve it. I haven't really looked up better ways. This is um, the 4x4 I have. And ever since I got it, it wasn't very fast. And I don't know what's wrong, but it was one that you build yourself. And I don't think I have the right, um, hold on, <laughs> lubrication. <laughs> That's something that um, that people who have never gotten into this before <laughs> get really confused about but there's basically like a hundred different kinds of lubricant at different viscosities <laughs> and the only one I have is the one that I bought when I was first getting into it and at the time nobody played with these as much as they do now so the only thing that people recommended is lubricant for remote control cars and so that's the one that I put in all of these, and that's why most of them suck. But I do love the look of this one. Um, this was, I think, the first one I ever bought. But I actually lost the original one that I got and uh, left it on a boat. And so I ordered the same one. <laughs> and then this one is my favorite thing in the world. I got this last summer and it's amazing. At least it was amazing. There's probably better ones now even. It seems like they keep on getting better, but this one has um, ball bearings in it, in all the pieces. And I didn't build this one myself, so it has the right lubricant in it. <laughs> Is there anybody watching who does this, uh, this game? <laughs> There's definitely like a few of you that have, have done this, but I don't know if you're watching. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple solves and show off. <laughs> I'm not incredible, but for like a, a side hobby, I think it's pretty good. Oh my God, I almost installed a virus on my computer. <laughs> I wonder if this is the best way to do it or if I should have the timer as a small. Let me do like a window capture. <laughs> I think that might be the best way to do it. Okay, window capture is not working. So I'm going to do just another display capture. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I think there's good. All right, here we go. Maybe I should zoom this in. It's a bit tiny. Well, it's just a number. It's not like anything's happening on this screen. Because the Rubik's Cube is already small to begin with. If it's just a little preview, it'll be like a little dot. All right, here we go. Just a warning, I can only do this in 30 seconds. It's not like those five-second guys on YouTube. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with the scramble that they've provided. So I'm just scrambling right now. I also haven't done this in a while. I forget when the last time I picked these up is, but I don't even think I've picked these up since I got home the last time. All 
All right. I'll do a live solve commentary. So the first thing I notice is uh, there's this piece on the opposite and um, hmm. Hmm. I think, I don't know. I'm just going to wing it. Here we go. Oh boy. You didn't start the timer. Huh? Oh, I didn't start the timer. <laughs> This one's just a warm up, so. Oh, I screwed up anyway. And for anybody who's never done this before, I think anyone can really enjoy it. It's almost like a passion that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. That's what it feels like. All right, up, back to, right to. I'll start the timer this time. Oh, this is the same solve. Let me. Get a new one. All right. Well, it doesn't really matter now. <laughs> I guess it should be just chatting, huh? I'll change it back to Okay, there we go. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. I'm just going to scramble it with my fingers instead of reading. Yeah, there's people on uh I've seen some videos where they like I think I'm clipping. Where they play a song and then like each move is one of the notes. <laughs> I don't have a five by five. I have four and then seven. Okay, I think I'm gonna do just this one last solve. Unless it's complete shit. And then I'm gonna do <laughs> one more. I'm just showing Rubik's cubes <laughs> because I want more people to do it. All right. Okay, 35, so it's not my best, but. <laughs> oh, I didn't finish. Oh my God. <laughs> I think that was like 50 seconds then. I don't think this is the right setting for doing Rubik's Cubes. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. I'm sorry. Just one more. Okay, here we go.
Oh no. Damn. I think it would have been less than that if I didn't screw up. All right. This, um, this is the end of the Rubik's Cube segment, but I really suggest don't buy a Rubik's Cube like the, the ones at Chapters. Go on like, um, I don't know what, which one's this one. I would just get this one <laughs> unless there's a better one now. This one's called, I'll type it in the chat. Um, I bought two of these and I gave one to my friend Maxwell and we were both like so happy when it finally got here. It takes a long time from China. That's the company. And then it says Magic Cube X3. But I think there's an actual name for this. But I don't see it anywhere. All right. They're not cheap. This one was like 40 bucks but it might've been more with shipping. Some of them are cheaper though. Like you can get, you could even get like a decent one from like a toy store. Just make sure that it's like one of the recognized brands and not some like American, um, like V cube is not one to go get. Anyways, it's so much fun when you finally like, I don't know the, uh, just the feeling. One of my favorite parts about these cubes is um, unlike a normal Rubik's cube where if it's like it has to be exactly right for you to turn the pieces but for these they can be offset like this and they're still gonna yeah I don't know that part's so cool all the pieces come out and they all have like these really weird shapes Okay, I'm changing the category and I'll open up Ableton. Hello, Binks. Um, do you guys have any questions related to, I don't know, any problems you have, um, like general problems you have with making music? I know I have too many. I guess there's like almost two kinds of people. There's like people who love to make music at any time. And it's basically like their escape from their job or something. And any chance they get free seconds, they're working on music. And then there's the other kind of person who's like loves making music, but there's a lot of pain involved somehow. And it might be like perfection related or just trying to motivate yourself to finish something. I'm going to try and answer these questions. A lot of came in at the same time. Keeping your mix from getting muddy. I would say the muddiness is mostly in the lower frequencies, which if I'm doing a lot of layering, I don't really layer stuff down there. <laughs> it's mostly layering chords and sounds. And even then I'll make sure that like if you have a synth and a flute sample, there's no point in having the same note in a chord or I guess sometimes it's okay, but 
a lot of times you can just take out a note that's already being played in another layer and not hear the difference and it'll fix some of the like phasing issues if they're not exactly in pitch and then up top you can pretty much like spam as many samples as you want before it gets too busy sounding and then just keeping the bass clear like if you have two bass sounds it's going to get muddy <laughs> starting a song is probably the hardest part for me it used to be more difficult i used to just like dread the empty default screen just like <laughs> no matter how you start you're always going to see the same screen and it used to just remind me of like not knowing what to do <laughs> now I, I think i have a pretty good flow for starting new ideas i'll usually just decide that i'm not going to make a song i'm just going to make something random <laughs> and see how it goes like even just like throwing something random like this floor tom sorry that's pretty loud huh I'll throw this floor tom in. Let's pitch it down negative 25. And let's grab this part here <laughs> and loop it. And then like just stuff like this, just like really no intention of making anything sounding good. And once you have anything as a start, you can start putting more stuff on. And at least it's not complete silence that you're adding stuff to. I can't stop this sound for some reason. Ableton's completely. <laughs> okay, there we go. How do you keep your focus after arranging something for hours and hours in a row? Hmm. I, I like the this technique I've been doing lately called Pomodoro, where you work for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. And 25 minutes, five minute break, and you do it four times. And just having that little five minute break makes the time fly by without feeling like you're in some weird nightmare of moving MIDI notes around. How do you finish bridge and lead to the end part? <laughs> well, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I guess I could look at, I don't know, really. It I guess it depends on the bridge and the end part. <laughs> drum grooves that I like? I don't know what, if that's a question. <laughs> hmm. Piano strings and adding anything else sounds corny. It sounds like you should start sampling stuff and sampling weird stuff. Just go to the library and take out a bunch of CDs and rip audio from them. <laughs> I have a pretty weird collection of stuff that's easy to sample. For instance, here's just one I pulled out at random with EQ on it. But like right there, I can make a synth out of that and it's automatically not gonna sound corny. Oh yeah, I need to find support acts. I just don't know how to do it. I guess if you guys want to email me, you should email me at tennyson.rocks at gmail.com and send me like a video of your live set. And I mean, make sure that you are you live in one of the places we're going to. <laughs> how do you put real emotion into music? Um, I don't know. That part sucks. <laughs> Seems like if you try to put real emotion into something, it's going to suck. And if you're feeling anything real like if you're really not feeling great you probably don't want to make a song about it until you feel better again so i don't know really sometimes you just get lucky like you're in a certain state and you're in a certain like point in your life and only afterwards can you look back and be like whoa that song somehow i captured what i was feeling but i didn't even know i was feeling it at the time Hmm, do I start with melody or rhythm? I usually always start with melody. 
I don't really know. It seems weird. I usually add the rhythm to match the song that I'm writing instead of the other way around. How to turn a good section into a full song. That part's also really hard. I usually, if I have an idea, I'll just, yeah, just try and make something random with all the parts that I have and forget about the original idea. And then I'll probably end up with something I like better. Like I just found this, I w it's not going to be on my computer. It's going to be on this one. I just found this, um, it was called Oak One and it's XYZ, but the idea for XYZ and it sounds nothing like it. Mistakes beginners make while mixing. I, I just have a feeling that people try and solve a bad mix by trying to turn up and turn down different tracks. And so they'll like turn up the kick drum and then they'll turn up the strings and then they'll turn up this. And they just kind of do this like turning up thing until everything's just like a bunch louder, but the mix is the same. And I think the solution to that is EQ. So when you first start mixing, you forget that everything can be fixed with EQ and not by turning up and down all the volumes. How do I like to experiment? I don't know if I even like to experiment. I just force myself to do it. To be honest, there's like, I'd say 10% of the time that I'm working on something, I'm excited and enjoying it. And the other like, another like 50% I'm like just kind of focused and not really feeling anything and then the other 40% I'm like just forcing myself <laughs> to do something instead of nothing how do you stay in the moment and keep oh wait I missed some layering bass I don't think I've ever layered bass <laughs> I'll have two different bass so sounds and there'll be like different parts of the song, different bases, but I don't think you could really, so I guess sometimes like a double bass sample with a high pass layered on top of your bass might work, but if they're sharing the same like 40 Hertz, 50 Hertz, that's pretty low for bass note, maybe 120 Hertz. <coughs> How do you stay, in the, uh, keep moving ahead instead of listening to a loop forever? I don't know. There's this story of Fortet where he make where he makes like basically the initial idea to the song and he loves it so much that he'll just play it on loop for hours. <laughs> I saw an interview where he said that he he made something on a train and he just stopped working on it and just played it on loop for the whole train ride. <laughs> like ten hours. So <laughs> that's kinda unrelated to your question, but very related. There's um there's a thing I've been trying recently um where you visualize um <laughs> you visualize a point of light growing into the size of your room with your eyes closed and then growing into the size of your neighborhood and trying to get that to grow visually and feel the size of it until you can like get somewhere to your like state and feel that and then go United States or whatever country you're in and then try and get the whole world in your head and keep going and then <laughs> just stop doing it and breathe and just do nothing and then open your eyes and keep working. Mixing while making the song is essential, I think. I guess for some people they might just do it all after, but I mean, if the kick drum's too loud and you keep working on the song, I don't know how you would not go crazy. Ooh, that's an interesting, I've never heard about frequencies and song structure, but that sounds kind of crazy. Avoid bringing in below 60 Hertz before a chorus. <laughs> that's crazy. I guess for like subwoofers, it makes sense. I can kind of see that, especially for dance music. There's Ableton skins. I didn't know about that. That sounds fun. Yeah, I should make a template. 
for Ableton. Let's just jam on the keyboard. Yeah, I jam upstairs on the piano. <laughs> and then I record it on my phone and bring it down to Ableton. My five minute break, I um I just got a Kindle. My girlfriend got it for me. Christmas. That's the second present I've mentioned. <laughs> but as soon as it's the five minute break, I like open it and jump in the bed and just read for five minutes. My sister's in Los Angeles, I think for another two days. She's just chilling with friends, just doing random stuff. <laughs> Analog instruments are hard because I don't have any. <laughs> Sometimes I use the guitar that it was like one of my sister's birthday presents when she was like eight. And it's the only guitar in the house, but I use that a lot. Favorite sampling technique is just dragging something random into simpler and yeah, repitching it. I just like to take awesome recordings and use a small little piece of it. Like a, here's a random piece. So I could use that and then like stretch it out or something. That's kind of pretty much how I sample things. Some stuff I'll do, like I'll find um, a guitar recording and make my own out of little pieces of it. So if I want the, the melody to be like a certain melody, I'll just search for, it takes a long time, but find all the notes that I want and put them together. It's taking a long time. <laughs> There's more questions the more I answer. Sends you a lot. I'm sorry. Oh, if you guys, um, if you guys have a live act, and you're looking for a gig, um, you could send me a video of your, if you have any videos of your show, because sometimes the promoters at these shows we're going to be playing at just pick random openers, and sometimes it's a nightmare. Like it'll be like a seven piece band and there's no room on stage. So they have to set up in the audience. So I think for this tour, I should put some effort into finding better opening acts. So, Oh, and then I scroll down and you guys all answered. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. Okay. I like this question. I, find trouble making song about what I feel in my body and emotions I carry around all the time. Do you think the emotion is embedded subconsciously in the choices you make? Letting go? I heard about this. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a weird one. There's like, lately I feel like I just don't really feel that much. <laughs> like, it's just like, um, boring emotions and it's hard to make music from my emotions because of that I think just the winter just being stuck inside and nothing really happening especially like just working up until a bunch of things happen this kind of period is like I don't know very neutral for me and yeah it's hard to make music from any source inside my body um my favorite stuff that i've made is when i was like kind of being an idiot and i was like 18 and subjecting myself to unnecessary suffering like just walking all day and just feeling lost in the world <laughs> and you know that kind of thing like typical 18 um yeah but the music was like reflected that. But I don't really think that you should need to pretend to suffer to make good music or like force yourself to suffer. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I didn't go to school for sound design. I really don't even know. I don't think I'm that great at like sound design stuff. I hear a lot of artists that are coined as like sound design artists and it's always like incredible. They're doing stuff that almost seems impossible. I don't really think about sound design too much. Like sometimes I'll make some weird like clicky synth and, and like add it in, but How do I organize my music files and project files? Um, well, I have a music folder, but I haven't used it since I got Spotify. It's kind of like back in the iTunes days, but they had like automatically add to iTunes. So it would just sort it into folders. And in FUBAR, I have that folder hierarchy set here. So I can just search for an artist and I have to add it to the playlist like this. Yeah. And then project files. I always just have them kind of randomly, but right now I decided to do folders by month, which doesn't really help. Um, before this, I was doing like, I had a folder called nothings where I just throw anything that I probably wasn't going to work on ever again. And then if I made a good idea, I'd save it outside of the nothings folder. <laughs> I don't know really what the best way to do it is. Best way is to like, I don't know, delete things or I don't know. It's hard. Right now I'm not struggling too much because I'm not starting a lot of new things. I'm just working on older ideas. I wish I could see your responses in real time, but I'm so backed up on these questions. Pro tip, you just soft clipped the master. I can't tell if this is a joke. I think it is. <laughs> I mean, there's there's no way that th that's even a solution for anything. That's another thing about, so Dumu said, gotta say it's very comforting to see that you face the same main issues that I do when making music. There's a lot of um, silence about not enjoying making art. It doesn't seem like a lot of people talk about it openly. And the only stuff you do see is like corny quotes about how if you don't enjoy it, you should give up. Or if you need motivation, motivational quotes, then you should just give up. Or like if you don't love what you do, things like that. And then you see like people talking about how they love what they do. And that's all they do is make art. And I don't know, it just it's so it's so hard to find somebody talking about how you know, lifting up a pencil to write is the hardest part about writing. I saw a couple of things. Um, there was actually, the moment I realized that I wasn't alone, there's like a video, I forget who, I think it was like Nerd Writer or something, one of the video essay guys on YouTube, and he had a video about, I think he called it resistance, but it's just the feeling of like the unnameable resistant force you feel when you're trying to make something. There's like the part of you that wants to make something and then the sometimes stronger part that's like, no, don't, don't. That's like, just do something else. Or like, yeah, it's weird. We've had all types of people open for us, including indie pop bands, yeah. Favorite, what song is your favorite to work and which is the least favorite? Least favorite was probably, um, let me see. Let me open up the tennis <laughs> discography. I mean, I, I've had songs that were really difficult to work on. But in the end, I think it's worth it. So I wouldn't say it's like my least favorite to work on. I'd say, hmm, I didn't really like working on the Nyomza song very much. Um, it was kind of like a new experience for me working with somebody and basically I was like put into studio sessions by Ausla. They gave me like a list of artists that they had contacts and good relationships with. And I basically like said yes or no to some of them. And it was just kind of like a little awkward. And I was like thrown into the, that situation. It was weird. I just never experienced anything like that. Kind of decided that I don't really like studio sessions <laughs> very much. Um, my favorite song to work on, I'd say, is the remix. Um, 
I don't think it's even in here. The Your Tempo remix. I was like just super enjoying it. I was in Japan for the first time um, at my girlfriend's house and going to different like Starbucks in Japan and working on it. It was super fun. Um, it used to take me like two months to finish a song. And I think that's just because I wasn't focused on how many hours I was spending. And so if I actually like did the math, it was probably like two and a half hours a day average or less. I don't know. That's when it was really painful and I just couldn't get into the groove. But now I can do it if I really bear down and I don't have a lot of other things in the way, like social posts and stuff, then I can do something in two weeks. I made music with a different software. I think I would just struggle for a while until I learned the software and then miss some old features. And then if I went back to the old program, I'd miss the, the new features from the new program. Um, I know when a song is finished, <laughs> usually I'm like, I'm just at the last section, like putting the outro on. And at some point, I'm probably a few details away from being finished, but I just hear a voice in my head that's like, ah, it's finished. And then I, I really don't touch it after that. And usually all the sections up to the outro are, are already finished. And so I'm just like, put the last chord on the song and I don't bother to like fix maybe the transition to the last chord. And usually most of my songs end like that, just like, oh, it's done. And then I bounce it out and <laughs> never open it again. Um, for me, the small intricate details usually just start at the intro. So I'll have like the main idea of the song and I'll make an intro for the song and then I'll make the first part, put in the old idea and fix it and then add a totally new section outro. And like, meanwhile, I'm, I'm adding all the details as I go and I don't really go back and add details, but it's not great for workflow. So a couple times I've tried to make the whole song in a very rough, um, rough detail and then still do the thing where I start from the beginning and go to the end. But there's a lot less work to do because there's like a whole soggy skeleton there already. Yeah, so um, helpful to write in different places. There was a time where I spent most of the time outside of the house. So like like what EP I did all at like public libraries and coffee shops. And I only went home to listen to what I made, but I went out every day, even in the winter. And I'd go to four or five different places in the day. <laughs> so I'd work at one place for two hours and then walk half an hour to another place. And I'd spend the whole day, I'd probably only work like four hours because I'd be doing a lot of walking. Um, now I still like to go to coffee shops. There's a there's one downtown that I really like to go to and I don't really mind the noise. But in the winter, it's hard to motivate myself to put on a big jacket. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever gonna reach the, the bottom of the scroll. <laughs> I hope I do. Maybe I should go really fast. Any good sampling recommendations? All right. If I'm being, I don't know. Um, this is unrelated to um, sampling, but there's a program I know called Soulseek, and it's totally unrelated. And I don't know what the, um, it's just a program that I know of. Sixty skins? I didn't even know skins for Ableton were a thing. <laughs> that sounds so weird to me. <laughs> it reminds me of like back in the Windows Media Player days. I would go and download skins for Windows Media Player. <laughs> I loved them. It was just like that's all I did as a kid was download different uh, visualizers and skins for Windows Media Player and just play Avril Lavigne songs. There was one like it was like an Xbox theme or something, and there was a goo guy, and the the goo would dance to the song. Okay, has to finish mixing a remix tonight. 
I don't know. I don't really know what, what to tell you. <laughs> Maybe you should stop watching. <laughs> Something just stopped being a sound. Did everyone else hear that? There was like a hissing and it stopped. I can't see your responses because I'm halfway up the scroll on the chat. How to be more productive other than just spending time on a DAW. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's, um, I have Facebook feed turned off with this um, Chrome plugin and it just puts like inspirational quotes instead. But I keep reading this one and it says like, working a lot doesn't matter or something like that. Unless you're working on the right thing or working in the right way. I don't know what the quote is, but basically like, yeah, does like if you're spending eight hours doing nothing, what's the point? You have to be working towards the right thing. And I think about that a lot. Sometimes I worry about focusing too much on how many hours I'm doing <laughs> and not what I'm actually doing. So hmm. All right. In terms of my career, <laughs> I don't know. Like I just I have to keep my mind set on bigger and bigger goals. But at the same time, it feels like platforms are just dying left and right. <laughs> and it's it's just weird to see the engagement go down because sites are going down. I don't think about it too much, but if we're talking about my career, I do worry about that. It's so weird relying on websites that just can disappear. <laughs> um, your friend can send his music to me to tennyson.rocks at gmail.com that's probably a good way just like write a little email and send the send it as an attachment where do you see Tennyson in 10 years will Tess be in another band will I be moving into more film I have this file on my computer where I have like 5 years from now 10 years from now 25 years 50 years and I've done the really old ones, but I've been kind of like putting off doing where I want to be in 10 years, in five years. It's kind of really, it's really hard to decide what you want and decide that that's what you're going to work on because so often we like set these goals and then once you achieve it, you're like, that was stupid. That's something I wanted five years ago. Hmm. I wish I knew why the Seattle show wasn't listed on the venue's website. I'm going to write that down and follow up. <laughs> Seattle show not on venue website. Thank you. Okay. I think I might be getting close to the end of this. I'm just looking for question marks, but... It's so weird to see responses from something I said so long ago. Um, to see all my tracks, I use FUBAR. So I can have different playlists. And so I'm working right now. I'm trying to finish four songs for a tiny project to put out after the, the EP that's coming out soon. I just want to have something to follow up with shortly afterwards so I don't lose any traction. And yeah, so I can make little playlists for and collect all my bounces MP3s. I would collab with Draftage. Mm. Oh yeah, I should make. I'm gonna make a song once I get through these questions. Stop asking questions. We're starting now. <laughs> Greek yogurt. I'm skipping that one, but I think it's a bit dry by itself. <laughs> I love that I had an opinion on Greek yogurt. It's dry. It dries out your mouth. I don't know why. It's like putting paper towel in your mouth. Um, making like what was just a nightmare. I didn't like that time. Luckily afterwards, after it was finished, bunch of cool stuff happened we played like 
all the cool summer festivals and but like while I was working on that basically it took so long that nothing was happening like I wasn't getting any cool Twitter notifications I was just kind of like in my own world now I'm working on music and I have to worry about like posting other stuff and like posting tour dates and stuff like that but at that time there was literally nothing to do but work on music Oh, different waters. <laughs> um, I'll, why don't I just play? I'll play a little bit of each song, just a second, just for fun. Okay, you've heard three of these. You probably, if you guys have been watching a lot of streams, you might have heard me and Tess play it live. This one's, I think, one of the longest songs I ever made. I made it in the summer. I was doing like a lot of walking around the neighborhood and waking up really early before the like before the sun got up and going outside and um, setting my laptop out in the backyard and working as the sun came up. And once the sun's up, it's too hot to work outside, so. Yeah, I'd spend my mornings like that. This one is the first one I made on the EP. I made it like almost too long ago. I don't even want to think about it. Don't remind me. I made it after, basically after Pancake Feet, which was the last song I made before this one. And I just, it just stayed finished and I didn't have anything to do with it. It's like a weird, there's almost no instrument tracks. It's all samples layer on top of each other. Here's um the one that just came out. This is my favorite song I've ever made called Melon Pan, which is um Japanese pastry. It's um like um sweet dough with it's like cookie dough on the outside baked onto the outside in the shape of a melon it's just i like it a lot i like it more than i would like my own music something weird happened it's like a song that i can enjoy <laughs> as a song instead of as something i made And for some reason, I play it for Tess, or I didn't. I don't play it for Tess sometimes. I played it for Tess once I finished it, and she had like a really weird emotional reaction to it, and she was like crying. She's like, I don't know why I'm crying. There's just something about the song. I don't even have like. She didn't even hear me working on it because I was in Japan. I don't know what, <laughs> if anybody else will have the same reaction, but. And then this one's out already. So it's just three more songs that are coming out, but they're going to be coming out at the same time on March 1st. Sound design VST. I don't know how to answer that. I don't know if that really sound design VST. The most complex VST I have is probably something in waves that I don't use. There's some weird ones where you open it and there's like a thousand things going on. Okay, I reached the bottom, everyone. So <laughs> there we go. I take two sound, I take two audio interfaces live. One is a um, Steinberg and one is a Behringer, Behringer. And it was the cheapest audio interface I could buy. And it works way better than any other interface I've ever purchased. <laughs> I think it's spelled like this. But go and pick yourself up a couple of these. And while you're at it, pick up, look up F SM57 on Amazon and buy some of the knockoff SM57s and 58s. <laughs> There's like <laughs> these real cheap knockoffs and I bought a bunch of them and they sound great. I think it's hilarious like, just how good it sounds. It doesn't sound any worse or better 
And the only reason I ordered it was it was like $15, the one I got. And when I looked at all the reviews, everyone's like, this is incredible. Why is this $15? So yeah, I might even order a bunch more and set them up in like a prism of microphones. Maybe like a, um, like a chandelier or something. <laughs> is it wise to make a... I, I need to stop answering questions. No more questions. <laughs> I'm going to... Why don't I make a song out of a YouTube video again? Maybe I should roll the... Um, I should do the raffle. And then whoever gets picked sends me a YouTube video. <laughs> What's the... Um, I forget. Nightbot. That's what it's called. Okay. This should be funny. If you guys want to send in a... I'll give you the, the keyword to send in. Um, okay, I don't actually know how to do this. It's set to keyword, but... Okay, so the keyword is poopy. All right, you guys are definitely, it's working. <laughs> yeah, just, you don't even need an um, exclamation mark. Just the word poopy will enter you to win the uh, YouTube link contest. <laughs> and let me turn on mods too, because that was turned off. All right, 30 of you have entered. I'll wait till this slows down and then we'll do the dice roll. <laughs> It could be fun to do like single samples submission instead of a big folder as well. Anyway, okay. It's slowing down. Hurry up. Type poopy if you want to send in a YouTube link. Just in case I didn't um, make myself clear, <laughs> I'm going to download the audio for the video and try to make a song using only the audio from that YouTube video and nothing else. So if you win, you can make it as easy or hard as you like. You could send me like a, I don't want to give you any ideas, actually. <laughs> I don't want to ruin this for myself. <laughs> um, you can only type poopy once. Well, you can type poopy twice, but it doesn't do anything. All right, looks like all 38 of you have entered. Here we go. Okay. Balder Kaldi. Please send in your YouTube link. <laughs> oh god, you guys entered so late. Well, sorry about it. That's just what happens. It says, wait, what? <laughs> okay, we can skip you if you like, but... If you have a funny YouTube video that you like, that you want me to make a song using only that video, send that in. <laughs> You're not allowed to take somebody else's <laughs> submission. Okay, you got... Are you on YouTube? You prob <laughs> You're probably on YouTube looking at your favorites. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. On it. <laughs> okay, he said skip me. All right, here we go. Next roll. Hazy soda. <laughs> this is so weird. It's like you win, but you don't win anything. Your ends. I'm going to pull up Twitch on my computer.
Did he send it yet? What's going on? You have 15 seconds. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, not kidding. <laughs> Scared. <laughs> okay, he's sending one. He's sending it. Okay, I got the link. Can you guys can you guys see what he sent? No, because let me open this in. What is this the same video? Okay, can you guys see this? Yes. What is this? Is this a music video? I've never seen this before. If this is some kind of viral thing. <laughs> this reminds me of like five Christmases ago. Playing Gmod racers. Okay, it's very repetitive. I think the actual sample is like <laughs> four seconds long. So it's gonna be a challenge for sure. But I can do it. I used to like this site called file to HD, which would just use, like, you could download pretty much anything that was on the website. But lately, it doesn't seem to work, so I've just been using this one. All right. This is going to be really hard, to be honest. Well, right away, I noticed that I've got a clean ride symbol, <laughs> so I might as well take advantage of that. Let's do something instead. There we go. It's not much, but... It sounds like an Apex Twin intro. Sweet. That's not a great start, so let's go find some stuff I can use. <laughs> oh, this can be kind of easy. Let's see. All right, what do we got? I didn't just dab. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I realize it looked like I dabbed, but...
get some more stuff quick. I don't like this video anymore. Oh my god. Tell me this is something. This can be applause. Ooh. That's good. That's helpful. Let's change the bass note of this sample. That didn't work. <laughs> All right, let's just get the major chord actually. So this one is minor, so I just need the relative major, which should be four semitones. I don't know if that's what a relative major or minor is, but <laughs> I'm just putting in the... Yeah, it might be cheating, you're right. get some more stuff I, I, I. maybe kick drum snare drum they're talking over everything <laughs> i don't know if i should use the kick drum from here let's just try it and see if it sounds good This is really hard. 
I don't know if this is the best sample, but I just have to do it. Um, a viewer sent in this for me to make a song out of. <laughs> It's quite hard. backwards for everyone else. <laughs> Happens to me every time. Let's put some delay on this. to make something of a chord. <laughs> oh no, the nightmare has begun. <laughs> Help me. I wonder if I could get a note out of this. Please let me have a note. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I can take that out of there. I don't think this is cheating, is it? That didn't even work. my base. Let's do it. <laughs> this is pretty close to cheating, I think. That's definitely cheating. Thank you. 
what we got. Be cooler, maybe. Back to chords, I think. Sound. 
It's a nice percussion sound. Might be someone screaming, but... I feel like I tried to sample that, and that's what happened to the last thing. I don't know. Everything has these, like, bar chord guitar samples underneath them. actually good enough I can put this on a simpler I don't have any granular anything did you know you can drag a frozen clip to a sampler <laughs> okay it doesn't work though I think it needs to be Rose with the entire. Oh no. Whoopsie. There goes like two gigabytes. <laughs> the last sound I'm adding and then I want to be free of these shackles. Salad with, yes, salad, please. I think it's already, I think it's a call. Oh, wait, I'm so not. I hate missing jokes. I feel like such an idiot. Oh my God. I'm glad it was kind of subtle. I'm never going to get this track.
。はい。I can make this sound sound good by putting reverb or something on the whole thing. Oh, we're getting a band again. This one's done. Pretty creepy.、Um, kind of like, I don't know, some room you wake up when you, some room you wake up in when you die. I'll send it to the、um, Twitch subscriber Discord channel. Because <laughs> apparently somebody wants this. And I'll get granulator too. This sound is really loud. Some of these seagulls, you're right. Nothing happens, tell her. <laughs> Not today. What was this from again? Okay, I'll do one more. Please give me something good. <laughs>
Did you send it? Oh, it just takes a while to update in the thing I'm looking at. <laughs> it just came in, I swear. Okay. I really like this one with rain. <laughs> Can I even play this on stream? I don't want to get copywritten. I'm going to not accept this one. <laughs> You could send another one, but maybe pick something that's not a song. <laughs> could be like an ASMR video. When me and Tess were rehearsing, it muted part of the rehearsal because it recognized a Tennyson song. Oh my god, my mic's on. I thought it was muted. I wouldn't be too so loud. <laughs>
Oh, you can't hear anything. Sorry. I'm so in the zone. I feel like that was like 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm literally out of it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So <laughs> while you were gone, while I was gone, <laughs> I made this sound. I forgot that if I mute my voice, it also mutes everything else. Okay, maybe I should go back. I just took out, I think it's from one of the starting chords. I think I took this, duplicated it, reversed every second sample, and then repitched it. Something like that. But I think a different part of the track. It's actually a good way to make any sound from this, I think. Let me try that again. Yeah, I think that's where I took it from. Okay, anyway, so I need some kick drums, I think. Actually, let's do bass. That's something I can use. I hate how long it takes me to do stuff like that. some percussion somehow. <laughs> I know I could probably use this kind of thing. Not even, there might even be a better thing to use for a snare. Oh no. <laughs> 
It's gonna be hard. There's something up here. Right on. I like the harmonics. I'll keep it. I don't know why I made it so long. No, I don't like this. kick drum I, I think another fret sound like that would work for the snare I just have to find the right one the same sample for hi-hats even.
think I'm just gonna use this thing. All this stuff's getting pretty far away. Thanks for the subscription. Let's see if this will work. I like Sampler because it has this like bouncing back looping thing. And you can even crossfade it still, which Sampler doesn't have. That's true. This is why I switched to Ableton from Pro Tools, because every time I wanted to do something fun, I'd have to close Pro Tools, open up Ableton, and then export what I made back into Pro Tools. Eventually, I just started doing it so much that I was like, why don't I just go into Ableton and get my Pro Tools plugins to work there? Maybe I'll use this for the bass. What a bass. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> if I just put some channel delay on this, it's gonna be crazy. Not that you should do that for bass, but... It doesn't matter.
this one's done. <laughs> Let's compare it to the other one. I mean, it's pretty weird. I didn't want to make something like what the sample sounded like at all, so I think I did an okay job. It's a good way to see like what your brain wants to create versus what you're trying to create. Like with that, like making this kind of thing, I don't really have any thing that I'm trying to make. So whatever comes out is just whatever comes out. And it seems like if I'm just screwing around, it always kind of sounds like this kind of weird idea. I don't know. <laughs> the other one kind of has the same vibe, like just kind of creepy. I don't know. I don't want to make creep creepy music, so I usually throw out ideas like this. Here's some other ones that I made from the last couple streams. They're all the same, like they're all really kind of weird. I don't know if they're actually good or not. I don't know if like they could be turned into anything. Maybe I'll send the um, the project files actually over to the Discord and people can work on them if they want. But I certainly don't want to work on these after I close them. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys want these, I will definitely send them over. I'll send all four that I've done. And you shouldn't need any more samples than the YouTube sample. <laughs> the problem is some of the plugins I'm using, like the Air plugins. So I'll just, I'll go back and, and replace them with Ableton plugins. Um, the program is called Live, <laughs> technically. Um, but everyone calls it Ableton, which is the company. And then the full name would be Ableton, the brand, and then live, the product. All right. Um, that's 8 p.m. I've been streaming for two hours. Thanks for everyone who's been watching up until now. And um, yeah, this one was fun. I like doing this thing with YouTube videos. And I'm going to go eat some more salad. And why don't I end this one with a bang? <laughs> I used to have this sample. I don't know if I still have it. Cinematic boom. Here we go. When I first started producing, I used this so much. <laughs> I loved it. But it's a good one to reverse. It's a quick one, so don't expect a big. Riser. Is that playing? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>